there, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of 3B TV. I'm Brian. This is 3B Farm and Homestead here in beautiful upstate New York. And on this episode of 3B TV, I want to share with you the reason or some of the reasons why we chose the CK 3510 SE by Coyote as the new tractor for our homestead. So let me tell you something. Arriving at this decision was not necessarily an easy one. First of all, there's just thousands of choices available on the marketplace between new and used tractors. There are just so many different options out there. And I'm not a tractor guy. I'm not an expert on tractors. Um, I don't follow the tractor market. I just wanted the right tool for the job. And I didn't want to overspend for it, but I also didn't want to underspend and later on regret that I hadn't bought a big enough tractor. So for me, I, I kind of approached this, um, well, kind of the way I live my day job. I said, okay, let me just get as much data as I can and put it together and uh, see what I can come up with. I didn't go into this decision-making process with any kind of allegiance to a color. Um, some people are John Deere fans and some people are um, Mahindra fans and some people are Kubota fans and some people are Coyote fans. I didn't go into this decision-making process with any kind of allegiance whatsoever. In fact, when I started my search, Coyote wasn't even on the radar. Um, I, I wasn't even considering Coyote until I talked to a friend of mine who had a Coyote that he loved. And so I said, well, let me take a look, add it to my list, but never really expected that I was going to purchase a Coyote. So let me start kind of from the beginning as far as what got me to thinking about buying a new tractor or at least upgrading our tractor to begin with. Last year, as you may remember, I put in some new raised beds. And where I put those raised beds is where I used to push my snow banks during the winter. I had, and still do have, a 53 farm mall cub that I used to plow my driveway. And while it did work well for us for eight or nine years, with that cub, being that it's only about nine horsepower, I had to really push my snowbanks back at the beginning of the season in order to make, be able to make it all the way through a winter. And so by putting those raised beds there, I knew that I was going to lose that area and I, I was going to have to do something different for snow removal. So my question then was, do I buy a snowblower? Do I try to buy a pickup truck with a, a, a plow? Um, what should I do? Sh should I hire somebody to come in and plow my driveway? Um, those were all of the things that were kind of going on in the back of my head. And eventually I decided, you know what, if I'm going to spend the money, um, let me try to buy something that kind of is a multi-purpose tool and um, will serve me not only for removing snow, but uh, as you remember last year, I was doing a lot of wood chips for my garden, for my pigs, for my chickens. So I was doing a lot of shoveling. So let me look at getting something that has a bucket. And then, because we have a long gravel driveway, let me look at maybe getting something that can grade my driveway. Now, that doesn't really narrow things down a whole lot. Um, most subcompact tractors would do all of that, uh, although it would take a little longer to grade my driveway with a subcompact tractor, but it could be done. Um, and I could get a bucket, and I could get a snowblower for all of those. Take a few more passes with a smaller snowblower, but um, I could accomplish all of that. So that didn't really narrow things down a whole lot for me. Um, and so I, I was trying to think also, what are some needs that I'm going to have coming up in the next couple of years? And one of the things that we've talked about is adding cattle to our um, homestead operation. And when we do that, I'll probably need to be able to wrangle around some round bales. So I really started looking at, okay, what is the lift capacity necessary to safely lift round bales? And that really helped me start narrowing things down a little bit um, because that really knocked out a lot of the smaller size subcompact tractors. And even a lot of the larger subcompact tractors really would be struggling to handle a round bale. Um, and so as I started looking at what the uh, options were on the market, um, I really narrowed it down to upper end subcompact tractors, but mainly compact utility tractors on the smaller size. What drew me to the, the Coyote? Well, uh, the Coyote um, has the best lift capacity in its class of any of the tractors that I looked at. 
and, and let me, before I get to the, to the 3510 SE, let me just kind of explain. I initially was trying to avoid DPF, um, digital, um, diesel particulate filtration, um, which is kind of an emissions thing that, that uh, the government has required tractors to have. And I thought if I can stay away from that, if I don't need to step up to DPF uh, to, or to a tractor that has DPF, then at least that's one less thing that can go wrong on my tractor. Now this does have that, and I'll get to why I got there in a second. But uh, so initially, I was looking at tractors 25 horsepower and under. Um, and as I was looking again at that lift capacity to be able to safely handle the round bales, what I was finding is that um, the Mahindra 1526, 1626 would get me there. The uh, um, Kubota L2501, I believe it was, would get me there. Um, Yanmar had a tractor that would do that, as did um, one of the, the, the John Deere's, and I think it was the 3025E, although I could be wrong on that. Um, and so that, those were really the tractors I started looking at. Also, let me just explain to you why I decided to go new instead of used. As I started looking at the used tractor market, what I found is anything that was about three years old and newer, and even about five years old and newer, the value of the tractors is holding so well that for a couple of thousand dollars more, I could buy a brand new tractor. And so I just decided that probably was a better option for me. That way I wasn't worrying about buying somebody else's problems. Um, so again, the one of the first things that really drew me to the, the Coyote was that the lift capacity was the best in class. Um, far better than uh, any of the other tractors. Um, it it can handle, I believe it's 1,800 pounds with this loader. Um, maybe it's even more than that. I don't remember, but it was definitely best in class. Um, some other things that I loved about this is uh, this is all steel. Um, it's, there, there's hardly any plastic on, on, on this tractor at all. And uh, that was one of the things with the Yanmars. They were almost all plastic. Uh, the John Deere was almost all plastic. Um, and even the Mahindras, this section here um, on the Mahindras was plastic. And what I was finding is that even before you bought those at the dealership, the um, plastic was starting to fade from the sun, just sitting out in the lot at the dealership. And uh, so I didn't really care for that too much, although that's just a cosmetic thing. But um, I really like the fact that this is all steel all the way around. Um, one of the other things that I really like about this is that it has um, up here in the front, um, it has the uh, skid steer style quick attach um, on the bucket, uh, and and I really like that because it gives you options, and you're not stuck in a proprietary type system. So that's kind of what a part of the reason why um, the John Deere was knocked out of the running for me because while they have a quick attach system, it is proprietary, and uh, and I didn't want to get stuck in a system where I had to buy or be serviced by the dealer. Um, one of the other things I liked about this is that the loader um, comes off um, very easily. It's got these um, uh, quick connects here. And, uh, and then you uh, pull this pin and uh, basically level it out and back away. But the um, control arm stays right with the tractor. And I like that for a number of reasons. First of all, it clears this area up here. So that when you go to get in and off the tractor, you can do it from either side. Now, I know technically you're supposed to only get on the tractor from the left side of the tractor, but just sometimes it's not practical. And so sometimes you want to be able to do this. And if you've got that control arm here, you're going to be banging your arms off of it. Now, if you do that, you have to be careful because the um, pedals are right there. But at least it does give you that option, that flexibility. I really, really like that. I also find that having the handle here is a lot more ergonomic. And um, the Kubota had theirs, uh, their handle was on the bucket itself, as was the 1526 for Mahindra. But the 1626 design for Mahindra did have the handle here. Um, a couple other things that I really, really liked about this tractor was the dual pedal. So instead of me having to rock my, a, a lot of the hydrostatic transmissions, um, you have to rock your, your, your heel back and forth. And I, in the wintertime, wear a rather rigid boot. So it would be almost impossible for me to be able to do that. And so having the side-by-side -side pedal was something else 
that I really, really like about this tractor. Um, this tractor also has a couple other features that I really, I really like. Um, I have something on this that's called a link pedal. What a link pedal is, is when you engage that, the more you depress this, the higher the RPMs go. So it's really great when you're doing bucket work and you want to be able to um, raise the RPMs on your, on your bucket um, without using uh, the um, little shifter knob here. So as I, as, I, as I really narrowed it down to, um, I was really looking at the Mahindra, the Kubota, and the Coyote. Um, the, th the other thing that I found, not only did this have best, best in class lift capacity, not only did it have a steel, um, more steel construction, it's a heavier tractor, it's a beefier tractor. So when I was on it, it just felt, it just felt built a little bit better. Um, now it's got its pluses and its minuses because the heavier the tractor, uh, if my lawn at all is wet, um, now I'm going to have more of a likelihood of sinking or leaving ruts, which isn't great. But um, again, thinking about that lift capacity, being able to handle uh, the round bales, having a little bit more solid tractor underneath you, I, I was very, um, what do you want to say? I, I was, I was uh, That just was something that was very important to me, and I really liked the feel of it. Um, so... I had really looked at and, and settled on the Coyote. Um, Price-wise, it was also, um, as I went through and I looked at the other tractors, it was uh, by far and away the, the cheapest um, tractor uh, compared to the, Mahindras or, the Mahindra or the, um, the Kubota. But the other thing that was interesting is, is I started adding um, some bells and whistles to the 2610, um, which is what I was originally looking at, which is the 25 horsepower version of this. Um, and this is one of the things I don't like about Coyote is that I did feel a little bit nickel and dimed at the 2610 level because certain things like a floor mat, not included. It's an upcharge. Um, if you want um, the link pedal, it's an upcharge. If you want uh, a tilt steering wheel, I don't even think the tilt steering wheel is available in the 2610. Um, if you wanted armrests, it was an upcharge. If you wanted um, the toolbox, it was an upcharge. Um, the the, uh, the rear linkages, um, if you wanted the ones that don't twist, I'm trying to, I can't remember what they're called. Um, again, I'm not a tractor guy, but that was an upcharge. So as I went through and I started putting together all of the things that I wanted in the tractor, um, my bill started going up and up and up. Now it was still less than the Mahindra, it was still less than the Kubota. Um, but my price tag started going up and my salesman said to me, he, he, he contacted me, he said, Brian, he said, you know, definitely be glad to put this through for you. But I also want to let you know that for, I, and I can't remember, it wasn't much more. Um, you can step up to the 3510 SE and all of that stuff that you want comes with the tractor. Um, and I think the SE stands for super equipped or special edition. I don't know. I, I can't remember, but, um, but all of those things that I wanted, the floor mat, the, the link pedal, the um, cruise control, the, um, I'm trying to even think what all. All of that stuff came as standard with the 3510 SE. And by paying a few dollars more, I got 10 horsepower more. The downside is that I ended up with the DPF um, system, which I'm not too happy about. I shouldn't say I wasn't too thrilled about, but um, many people have said it works fine and it's a system that um, to a certain extent has been put through its paces. It's not like I'm the first person buying a tractor with that system in it. So fingers crossed it's not going to be something expensive that I have to replace on down the road. One of the other things when I was looking at tractors, initially I thought I wanted a front mount snowblower. Um, and in fact, um, was almost, I was very insistent on a front mount snowblower, which when I was looking at Kubota's was going to knock me out of the L series lineup because they don't offer that as an option. But as I got to talking to my uncle, uh, my uncle has, uh, I believe a new Holland tractor. Um, he said to me, he said, Brian, he says, I don't think you want a front mount snowblower as much as what you, what you think you do. Um, he said, what you're going to find is he said, taking that snowblower off and putting the bucket on and then reversing the process in the winter. If you want to use the bucket, it's going to be a pain of the, a pain in the butt. And 
the fact is I don't have a, a heated garage in which to do that kind of a transition. So I would be doing it outside in the snowbank. And so I did opt to uh, go with the rear mount snowblower. And um, man, I have been very happy with it. By having those two side-by-side -side pedals, that's really, really helped when I'm backing up um, and uh, I'm kind of twisted around. I would never have been able to do that with the rocker pedal. I shouldn't say never been able to, but I wouldn't have felt as comfortable doing that with a rocker style pedal on the Kubota um, as I am with these side-by-side -side pedals on the Coyote. So been very, very happy with this tractor. Um, it's probably a little bit overkill for what I need right now, but I think looking down um, the, you know, down the road, I think this is going to, to serve me well. Um, now I have a little over two acres. Again, probably a little overkill for two acres. But I am hoping in the next couple of years to add some property. And so when I do that, having this size tractor, I think, will also serve me well. And uh, so, again, I'm very happy with this. Had a small issue with the, um, with, with the tractor when I took delivery of it. The hour meter wasn't working. And it did take the dealer a little bit longer to address that issue than um, I would have liked. But uh, the owner was very, very apologetic, and uh, I think we're going to have a good relationship. And um, so just fingers crossed, the next time I have an issue, um, we'll, be, we'll be in a much better place. So folks, thanks so much for tuning into this video. Um, again, I've been very happy with this uh, 3510 SE, and if you've got any questions or comments, I'll leave them below. I'd be glad to hear from you. Um, if there's something that you would like to know more about, uh, if you've got some questions about the tractor itself, its operation, uh, I'd be glad to share that with you. And uh, if I don't know the answer, well, I'll make something up. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Again, I'm not a tractor expert here, folks. I, I'm just a homesteader. I'm just a guy who bought a tractor. And up to this point, I've been very happy with it. I think I made the right decision. I'm hoping that I made the right decision. And uh, I think I have, based on the usage that we've had, um, in the four or five months that we've had it. So until next time, everybody, thanks so much uh, for tuning in and you have a great day.